Hi everyone, my name is Flavio. I'm a senior software engineer at Dyna Therapeutics. I'm very excited to be here with you today to talk about how we're scaling gene therapy research and development with Argo workflows and Hera um, at Dyna Therapeutics. It's not going to be the canonical deep dive tech talk into a piece of technology such as Arco workflows or Kubernetes, but rather it'll be an illustration of some of the applications of Argo workflows, specifically to the field of gene therapy, and hopefully illustrate how uh, we use it in, in a diverse um, set of use cases that will hopefully help your organization as well. Often talks will perform an introduction and then kind of end optionally with acknowledgements, but it's my talk, so I'm gonna start with acknowledgements first. Then I'll offer a brief introduction to gene therapy and illustrate how we're using Argo workflows um, and Hera and Dino Therapeutics. So we started using Argo workflows about two years ago, and throughout this time, I think I've met some, some absolutely astonishing individuals in the community. And I'm extremely grateful for all of the interactions that I've had with, um, with you folks in, in, in the community and all the contributions that everyone um, uh, performs that indirectly helps uh, the field of gene therapy and patients globally. With that, we'll talk a bit about gene therapy. So gene therapy broadly is a medical modality that is supposed to repair something that's broken or add something that's missing into, into cells. This statement of all organisms are made of cells, including humans, is universally accepted in the scientific community. And as you can see in this diagram, they're incredibly complex um, environments. Like you see all of these tiny dots, the, you know, these cells were uh, stained, so they fluoresce under a microscope. And you see all these tiny dots that are components that contribute to chemical reactions and things of that kind that help us function properly. So if some of those components um, are missing or they're broken in, in, in some way, um, you get all sorts of, of diseases. But delivering one of these genetic therapies to the right locations is actually very, very hard um, because these locations are, for example, the back of the eye, the brain, or the liver, um, and it's just very hard to get there without actually encountering a bunch of stuff on the way. So this is what we do actually at Dino Therapeutics. We're interested in solving this uh, giant delivery problem. So we're taking these naturally occurring molecules called adeno-associated viruses, or AAVs for short, um, and we are applying modifications to their sequences in order to make them more, um, be, be better suited for targeting specific tissues or specific cells. And we can do this because uh, we're working with advances in sequencing, or thanks to advances in sequencing from the past, 20 or so years. So here I have a, a diagram and a seemingly a random string of letters uh, that actually codes for that structure. So this is the structure that we know about for such a virus that's found in nature. So at, at Dino, we apply modifications through the sequence, such as this one, I bold it M, G, and D. You can imagine changing that to something like C, D, and S to modify a specific part of this structure to make it work in just in a different way. Hopefully be better at targeting, say, the eye or the, uh, the back of the eye. Now, these sequences are actually generally 750 characters long, and at each position you have about, your alphabet size is 20. So you have 20 to the power of 750 possibilities for these sequences, which is an immense number of strings to work with. Now, thanks to biology, we don't have to explore all of that, um, but we can actually change these, these, these letters, as I mentioned, through, through software, or at least a subset of them. And we do this via a proprietary set of, of, of algorithms that run primarily on Argo workflows. And at Dino, Argo workflows was the workflow engine of choice for these three reasons. We, we get immense flexibility from Argo workflows, and we focused on flexibility because we noticed um, an, an increased uptake in tools such as Docker containers in the scientific community which allows us to take one such container and therefore run in our Argo workflows you know, to solve a problem that Dino has. Through the examples that I will showcase in a few minutes, um, you'll also see a lot of fan out and a lot of fan in. And uh, to my knowledge, I think Argo workflows is one of the few workflow engines that's actually very good at, uh, at, at helping you orchestrate that capacity. And lastly, the ability to integrate with other CNCF products. So when you adopt Kubernetes and Argo workflows, you're not just taking those two products, but you're actually opening up 
the opportunity to integrate with all of the uh, constellation of products in the CNCF ecosystem, which is really, um, really empowering for organizations. So at Dyno, I will show you that Argo Workflows is the engine of sequence design, so taking these sequences and modifying them somehow to generate more, uh, more, more of these variants from this universe of, of available sequences. We're, actually, we're also doing biological data processing um, through Argo Workflow, so we're taking data from the lab, and processing it in specific ways, and um, storing it, of course, through data ingestion mechanisms that we have constructed. So sequence design. So the main problem of sequence design is to pick a starting point, as I mentioned, one of those naturally occurring viruses, and then you propose some changes to it via whatever approaches, uh, and then you choose the best among them. So here I have two example workflows. Um, the one on the left has about 500 pods running um, at the same time, and those pods are actually all proposing modifications to those sequences, kind of exploring this space of, uh, of available sequences, um, av available AAV sequences, then choosing the best, and then we actually have about 10 to 15 of those 500 pod workflows running at the same time in a sequence design session. And the reason we chunk them is because of size limitations that I will cover um, in a minute. And the one on the right is supposed to illustrate this nice fan-in that we have constructed that takes the output of all of these 500 pod or so workflows and aggregates the outputs into a final file that is actually manufactured in, uh, in that contains sequences that are manufactured in the lab. We train machine learning models as well um, for sequence design and selection purposes. And we have a variety of models that are actually trained on Argo workflows in a highly parallel manner. Now this workflow is again quite simple because we have 10 to 15 or so uh, workflows running up, uh, in, in, at a time for model training, uh, in, in a, for a model training session. And these models are generally trained on four or so GPUs uh, per Kubernetes node. And I want to emphasize that a lot of our workflows are actually based around script templates. And script templates are incredibly important at Dino Therapeutics because they offer us a, a, a giant opportunity for innovation. Because you can change script templates really, really quick. You don't have to uh, rely on your integration system to create a template and then use it in your workflow. Uh, instead, you can rely on a script template and just modify the source code as however you wish for your specific experiment or design session and just ship it. And this is important for, for Dyna, not only because of fast duration, but because we're also a research organization. So we're not a, we don't have external facing APIs. We actually have a lot of batch workflows and a lot of operational work that is executed on, um, on Argo workflows. Now, I mentioned that we parallelize these workflows quite a lot, and the reason we do so is because of limitations with uh, gRPC, etcd, and Kubernetes annotations. Now, I don't know exactly whether the size limitations are exactly the same or like they're perfectly correlated, but between these three and primarily ETCD and Kubernetes annotations, we encounter a lot of problems because we uh, pass, you know, giant config files via parameters or something like that. Um, and that's important for, for innovation. I know we can use artifacts, <laughs> but, um, the flexibility of parameters is actually very important, and we would rather chunk the workflow up than, uh, than introduce the complexity associated with, with artifacts. Now, of course, once you have a bunch of sequences, things have to become a reality at some point. So you have to take all of those sequences, and you have to actually manufacture them in the lab. And you actually have to test, uh, test them in cells and animal models, which involves uh, a lot of experimentation. Then we have to take those, uh, we have to evaluate the tissues of those animal models, and we again have to perform genetic sequencing uh, on them to better to understand how the variants that we, are, we have tested have actually performed in those animal models. This also looks like a nice workflow. Um, maybe there's a future in which this is actually orchestrated on Argo as well, but we're not, we're not there yet. Now, working with sequencing data is actually very challenging. There are these like huge machines that are probably as, as tall as I am. Um, they're incredibly complex, um, and they, their, their output is actually a highly specialized, uh, a, a series of highly specialized uh, files, and they span uh, the sizes of 50 gigabytes to terabytes 
or something like that. So you need a lot of specialized uh, software to parse those out. And this is where we see a clear impact of our workflows at Dyno um, because it allowed the team that is actually responsible for this parsing software to implement some quite extraordinary workflows that, I will, that are on the next slide. And you'll see hopefully how important fanning out and, uh, fan out and fan in is um, through those workflows. So through this example, I would like to illustrate some of the scale of these workflows. Here we see, so they're, they're so large that I had to chunk them up because uh, they didn't fit on, on my screen. So they start from the, from the left to the right. Um, you see that we're processing about 100 or so, or so complex branches, such as the, the one in the middle and, and on the right, um, in, in, in a parallel manner. And all of those 100 branches are actually fanning out further into 90 or so um, pods in the middle there, and ultimately everything is aggregated into a final output on the right-hand side. In this one, I would like to further showcase the complexity associated with some of these workflows. So these files, because they're text, they're highly formatted, you can process them in a highly par parallel manner. So we often um, have these workflows that, are, that have this very beautiful fan out, fan in, and fan out, and fan in. Um, pattern ultimately uh, culminating into a, a single pod that actually creates the final human interpretable um, output. There's, but there's a lot of processing that happens um, uh, on, the, on the way to that. Now, once we've parsed everything out, we have some computational biology workflows that run uh, in order to compute the performance, to aggregate all of that parsing data and construct the performance representations um, of, of, these, of these viruses that were tested in experiments. And here we see, again, high parallelism, um, 150 or so pods, but we also see we're, we're using things such as exit templates for, uh, or on-error handling. For, for instance, we, here we do some, um, we check the data, we enrich and insert chunks of data, and then we put them in some storage solution, we record some metadata, we test the queries, but if any of these steps actually fail, we rolled the whole thing back. All of that data gets deleted because it's, it's more important for Dyna to have correct data than partially correct data. Now, if you're the type of organization that has a similar operational workflow in the sense that you start with something and then you feed it through multiple steps and then you use the final output into, into your initial one to keep improving, Argo is actually very empowering for that type of pattern. So in Dyna's case, we start with, data, with some data collection. We built some models, then we designed some sequences. Um, and once we design those sequences, we have to select among them, and then we have to perform some experiments, and then we parse the data to construct these performance evaluations. But that means we have now more data, which means we can build better models, and we can design better sequences, and we have more selection opportunities, and we keep going in this loop until we meet whatever goals we have set for a specific research program. So if you have similar workflows, not necessarily in gene therapy, uh, you can take advantage of Argo workflows to model this specific uh, business domain. When we adopted Argo workflows though, it wasn't that easy to actually use. So a lot of my, a lot of my colleagues don't come from an engineering background. Um, they're primarily um, scientists who focus exclusively on solving a specific problem and they don't necessarily care about the workflow engine itself. They just need to, to, get, to get the job done. So it was actually very hard to work with YAMLs um, at the beginning and other SDKs that we have tried. So we've created Hera, which is a Python SDK that's released under Argo Project Labs. And the reason we created it is because we wanted to, to take advantage of the Python ecosystem. At Dyno, we primarily use Python for, the, for all of the data science ecosystem that it has, um, that, that, that Python supports. And that gives us the opportunity to have code over YAML. Code is much more easy, it's much easier to check, it is much easier to interpret, it's much easier to share and understand what it actually does and also, also talk about it uh, conceptually. Hera, at the same time, while a Python SDK, it still showcases love for YAML because Argo workflow still ultimately relies on YAML files. So if you have uh, GitOps patterns that rely on YAML files to define templates, for example, you can still use Hera specifically for that. And the biggest win that we have noticed with using Hera is actu actually is 
it has created a more DIY, do-it-yourself uh, environment in which your people create their own workflows rather than rely on a do-it-with-me or do-it-for-me workflow, which is clearly not sustainable. And I like to call Hera offering, uh, as, as being an SDK that offers complex simplicity in the sense that it's simple to use, but you also at the same time have access to the, uh, the full, oh, the lights, um, to the, the full feature set of, of Argo workflows. And I have a very short example. I have the canonical hello world uh, example that we see in multiple tutorials of Argo workflows where we create uh, this, this, this nice diamond of, of four tasks that has A, B, C, and D. So here I import a DAG workflow and a script. I decorate my function. And notice that I still get flexibility to orchestrate my, uh, the workflow myself. I'm not forced to have a linear program by decorating my functions. I just simply decorate them um, with perhaps some um, parameters of, of script templates. And then I simply call them with the familiar arguments or, or name uh, parameters that, are, that, are, that, are, um, that come from Argo workflow tasks or steps. So overall, we've seen great success at Dyno uh, with applying our workflows to the field of gene therapy. It has allowed us to scale our research and development efforts to degrees that we may not have been able to do so uh, with other workflow engines. And I want to emphasize how important the, uh, the ability to integrate with other CNCF products is for Dyno because we don't have a large engineering group. And therefore, it's very important for us to take advantage of all of the open source uh, offerings that are out there and take and, and use everyone's contributions to solve problem um, in the field of gene therapy. Now, of course, there are still loads of problems to solve, not only in our workflows, but in the community um, broadly. And I'm, I'm very sure that as a community, uh, we're actually going to tackle uh, them all together. That is all I had for you today. If you have any questions, I'm happy to address them. I will be around for the week, so I'm happy to chat about Kubernetes, gene therapy, or anything else for that matter. Any questions? Okay, I actually do have a question. Yeah. The thing is, uh, you're using uh, the Argo Workflows UI at a large scale. So have you ever, like, tried to give feedback to, to the community how, how we can improve the UI? Yeah, is it? We have noticed the, so th the question is whether we have given feedback to the community with respect to the UI. So we did notice some pain points with using the UI, especially at scale. We haven't had the opportunity to discuss uh, improvements to the UI with anyone yet. But one thing that we are excited about is plugins um, because we, we might be able to construct our own plugins to display our own um, data in, in our course, as far as I know. Okay. Like, please do supply us with feedback. I mean, we have guys that will, basically we can push them to, to start looking at it and improve workflows UI. Awesome, thank you. Anyone? So, um, question is, is, is the, part of the team that does the actual um, research on Gene, they, they do leverage the UI or the, the server, or the, the information coming out of the server, how do you, how do you serve that uh, to them? Mm -hmm. We do take advantage of logs a lot um, because people are very familiar with, for example, the Python logging um, package, so they rely a lot uh, on that, but other than that, I believe we're very comfortable pushing files to something like GCS. So we're not really using artifacts and then serving them in specific ways, but rather using what's already familiar to, uh, to us and rely on, on Argo as the execution and orchestration engine of all of the work that we want to do. Thanks. Thank you.